Well, hello everyone, John Thomas here, and I am going to be talking a little bit about different types of revelation and how to respond to the different types of revelation. And I'm hoping that this is going to be a little bit more of a conversation. So as you're hopping on, if you have questions for something that I'm talking about, make sure to put it in the comments. I'm going to periodically be looking at the comments, trying to interact with your questions, with your comments, so that we can uh, make this into a, a little bit more of a conversation than just me uh, talking. So I, I'm hoping that this is going to be helpful. The, these are some things that I have learned over decades of working with different people that are trying to figure out what God is saying and what they're supposed to do with it. And I, I've got story after story uh, of people that have responded well and astounding testimonies of what God has done. And I also have plenty of stories of talking to people that have uh, made some mistakes in trying to, to follow God, trying to do what they thought that, that he was saying and where that can end up going. So uh, hopefully we'll have some wisdom that we can share and uh, it's going to be a, a helpful kind of conversation. So I'm going to start out with this. And uh, as I said, as you kind of get on, um, go ahead and put in your comments and your questions and we'll interact with those as we go. But I, I want to start out with the, the first part, which is you know, understanding what is from God and what's not from God. And we, we've talked about this in different videos, so I'm not going to spend a bunch of time. We actually have a whole online class on discerning and responding to prophecies that, that goes in depth. Uh, it's a little e-course that we have that, that'll help you a little bit more if you want to go deeper into this. But you have to settle that something is actually from God. So you, you have prophetic, or you, if you will, God speaking revelation that can come from multiple sources. Now, prophetic is when God is speaking through a person to a person. So when you're talking about something that is God speaking directly to you, that, that's more revelation, but our way of responding is going to be the same. One, you have to discern if it's really from God. Now, when it comes directly to you, there, there's a few different things that, that you're looking at. One, how important of a revelation is this? If this is encouragement, if this is you know, something saying that, that you've done well on something, you don't need a lot of discernment on that. Uh, be encouraged. Allow that encouragement to come. You know, obviously, if you really think that it's not from God, you're going to throw that out. But if you believe that that's God and it's encouragement, that's a good thing. Just go with it. Just run with it. But if it is something that is directive, maybe it's telling you to do something. Now you're going to need a little bit more discernment. Uh, if it is a one-off thing, you don't need a bunch of discernment. You know, you're, you're in the grocery store and you feel like you're supposed to pay for the groceries of the person in front of you or behind you. Um, all you got to do is say, hey, I, I want to pay for your groceries or you you can you know find a way of doing that in some way, you know, going through a, a drive through and and giving the, the people one hundred dollars and just saying, hey, pay for you know, however many orders that this is going to pay for list something like that. Even if you're wrong, what's it going to hurt? It, you're, you're not going to be uh, paying a high cost for that. Just go with it. You you feel like God's prompting you to go talk to somebody or maybe pray for somebody that you notice is having a physical issue. Now, don't go up and say, well, God told me I needed to pray for you, or God told me that if I said this, that everything was going to change. You just go up and you just offer it and release it. But if it's going to cost you a little bit more, maybe moving to another state or moving to another country, um, or, or, or something that would be a high cost. Maybe you, you feel like God is going you to go to Tehran and stand on a street corner and preach the gospel with a bullhorn. You better make sure that it's God, because if it's not God, you're most definitely going to be killed for doing that, most likely, right? You're, or at least going to prison, but most likely executed. I mean, that, that is a, a, a crime, a capital crime crime that in that particular area. So you're not going to be able to get away with that. Even if it is God, you might still be martyred 
but at least you have the benefit of having a martyr's crown because you're doing it in obedience to the Lord. You, you want to use a little bit more discernment. Make sure that it's God. So the cost is going to tell you how much discernment that's going to be in it. Now, let's say that the revelation is coming from another person. Maybe it's a prophetic word. Somebody has a prophetic word for you. There, there's a few things you're going to want to pay attention to. One, how well do you know the person? Uh, not just necessarily have you heard their name before, but do you know anything about their character? Do you know anything about their track record in the prophetic? If you're going to listen to somebody, you want to make sure that they're credible. They actually have a track record of hearing from God and being accurate. If there's not a track record, you don't want to, to let that person speak into your life. You're going to need a lot of other things and, and hear enough to make a decision without that before you think that they've actually heard from God because you don't know whether or not they're hearing from God or not because they have a track, if they have a track record of being wrong. But let's say they've got a track record of being right. They're consistently right. Now, what do you know about their character? What kind of person are they? Um, are they faithful? Are they integrous? How do they treat their family? How do they treat their wife, their their husband, their children? How do they treat others around them? Do they have uh, relationships? Are they known for outbursts of anger or are, are they known for being loving and humble? Are they known for serving? Are they proud and boastful? Are they are they quiet and peaceable? The, these kinds of issues are key in trying to discern whether something is there because somebody that God's going to use that actually has a relationship with God, if they have a relationship with God, they're going to start to bear the fruit of the Spirit. So the, the amount of spiritual activity in their life as far as revelations, quote unquote, is not necessarily uh, a, a way to know if they're hearing from God. But if they smell like Jesus, if they sound like Jesus, if they look like Jesus, now that's probably God. And you can trust that. So you want to look at their character. How well do you personally know them? If they're on a, from a distance and maybe they're a public figure, what's their reputation for character uh, if they're close to you, what do you know? These are going to be keys before you put uh, influence in your life, but also whether or not God has called you to listen to this person. And if somebody else gives you a word, you need God to speak to you to tell you that this is a word that you should be listening to. So you, you're going to want to look for that witness of the spirit and you're going to want to discern that for yourself. Now, once you've discerned that something really is from God, then you go to the next step. How do you respond? And I'm going to look at three broad categories of revelation. There, there's, there's lots of different ways that God speaks. And I'm not talking about the ways that he speaks, but what he's accomplishing with his voice. So one, what, what we call a, an identity revelation. What, what do you do when you get an identity revelation? This is when God is telling you who you are. Um, when, when you have something that's like that, one, you, you want to believe it. You want to set your faith on it. And there are things that are true and they're true for, for everybody to some extent, but there are some things that are unique to individuals or maybe emphasize in individuals. And when God begins to speak your identity, you want to set your heart in the place where you believe it. That There's warfare that happens in our minds. Often when God is speaking our identity, it's because something has tried to tell us that we're something else that there is a misconception that we have. Maybe there's warfare against that. Maybe we've had circumstances in our life. Maybe other people have said things about us that are untrue. And so God is speaking, well, this is who you are in my eyes. This is what I see when I look at you. And, and those things are really, really key. So pay attention to the way that you think about yourself. When God said that you are something, believe it. Uh, realign your thinking with the truth that he's spoken over you. 
pray it, begin to pray that back to God. When, when God gave um, David this promise, he said, you know, you, you've pleased me. You've done well. You've, you've got a good heart. I'm not going to let you build the temple like you wanted to. I'm going to give it to your son. But you, you've done this well. David goes in before the presence of the Lord, and he's like, wow, God, is this the way that you talk to people? You've just given me a word over my identity that, that I am now a king and that I am the father of kings, and many people are going to be standing in this line of kingship. This, this is amazing. Thank you so much for saying this about me. I mean, you're thinking about me. Why would anybody even think about people? And God, you're up in the heavens. Why would you think about man on the earth? And yet you set your affection upon me. Like he begins to pray that word. He begins to thank God for that word. You take these identity words, you make them part of your prayer. If you're not seeing the manifestation of it, maybe God's spoken over you that you have a healing gift. But you keep on praying for people and you haven't yet seen, seen consistent breakthrough in healing. Maybe it's still sporadic. You continue to pray. God, you said that you've given me the gift of healing. Lord, I'm trusting as I lay my hands on people, I'm trusting that you're going to release healing into their lives. Whatever that identity thing that God has spoken over you, begin to believe it, begin to pray it. And then number three, declare it over yourself speak it over yourself. There's a, a particular picture that God has used to encourage me for a little over 25 years. I can't even count how many prophetic words have been in this, uh, that have been given to me that has this picture, but it's something God originally spoke to me. And it was actually part of a, a prayer that I was praying to him uh, about the oaks of righteousness uh, out of Isaiah, but then also out of Psalm chapter one, that righteous is like a tree planted by the waters. And, and I am often given prophetic words uh, about being an oak, about being a tree, about being planted, uh, about bearing fruit in various seasons. And that is actually something that I declare over myself. I, I, I see myself in that. I believe that it's true about me. I've thanked God for it. I've asked him to, to, to hold that truth and not let me fall from that place. But then I've also declared that over myself. Um, I, I've had another one that, that I am a, a son, that I have an inheritance. I declare that over myself regularly, especially when I need encouragement, especially when I'm being called to do something that's beyond my ability. I begin to declare the promises of God and what he said over me, over my own heart and over my own mind. And it begins to reorient my thinking in accordance with his word. So that, that, that's, that's an identity word. I'm going to hit a couple of these questions. I'm seeing some comments, and then we're going to talk about the, the next kind of word. Um, let's see here. We've got Diane. Many times I receive a word from God to encourage me. That was time I'm fighting my depression. I also re receive impressions that lead me to pray for others. True enough, God speaks to us. Exactly. They, these kinds of things, when we're dealing with issues and he begins to give us what we need, you, you're talking about like dealing with depression, but then he begins to speak. He begins to give us courage. He begins to uh, speak that life into us. That's exactly what we're, what we're looking at. So Sonia asks, well, what does an identity revelation look like? It can actually look like any of the ways that God speaks. You can get that by being pulled up and standing in front of the throne of God, by having a vision, having an angel speak, like, like Daniel has an angel that comes to him and says, um, you're, you're highly favored by God, right? This is an identity word. There were other things that were also spoken, but he gets this identity thing that's given to him in an angel. It can come in a dream. It can come from a prophetic word somebody speaks over you. It could be an impression. It could be a thought. You could be reading scripture and it just gets highlighted to you. It could be a daydream that you have and God speaks that it's more than a daydream. It can come in any way that any revelation comes. And so the, the kind of categories or types of revelation are different than the ways revelation comes. 
Revelation can come in a bunch of different ways. In any of these categories, God can speak um, in, in this. So that's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody's asking about a, a vision um, that they had. And I'm, I'm not going to go into interpretation today just because of timing. If I start doing that, that'll be the rest of our time. So maybe you can hold on to that. The next time we do some interpretation, uh, we'll be able to get into those. But let's look at the next type of revelation. So you got identi identity revelation. You believe it, you pray it, you declare it. When you have corrective revelation, God telling you to stop doing something or to start doing something different than what you've been doing. it. Um, you you want to listen to this. Now, you want to discern that it's really from the Lord because there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Conviction, you're doing this, stop it. Condemnation, you're a bad person. Two very different things. One is about action. One is about identity. Conviction comes from God. It's very clear that the Holy Spirit is going to be convicting people, that, that God speaks of conviction. Jesus, when he's giving the, the prophecies to the seven churches in Revelation, he convicts them of their sin, and he calls them. He gives them an answer to it. There's hope for restoration. There's even promise for what would come if they overcome the issues that they were facing. So when God gives correction and, and it's about conviction, we receive it. If it's condemnation, we realize it's not from God. So we throw that away. We don't listen to condemnation. Oh, you've messed up. You'll never get it right. Oh, the reason this bad thing is happening is because you've done something wrong. I don't even know what I did wrong. I know, but you did something bad. That's condemnation. That's from the enemy. You fight it like you would any other temptation. You refuse to give it room in your head or in your heart. You replace the room that it's trying to take by, by making you mull it over, replace it with whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is good. So replacing the negative with the positive. But when it's conviction, you don't want to ignore conviction. Is it true? Yes, I did that. Then just receive the correction and then repent. God, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that anymore. I've hurt your heart. I've hurt this person. I've hurt these people. I, I've hurt myself. Whatever that is, God, I'm sorry. And then you begin to turn. You begin to change the direction that you're going to agree with truth, agree with righteousness. And so you want to receive it. You want to repent. But if it's something that maybe it's an ongoing thing and you've been dealing it with it, the same thing for a period of time and you do well and then you fall and you do well and then you fall and you're genuinely trying, there is a possibility that there's a need for something more, uh, possibly inner healing. Sometimes those are related to vows, maybe to judgments that we have. And it might be a real good opportunity to, to find somebody that can do some inner healing and deal with that issue so that you can take care of that. And, and it can pull some of that weight off of the temptation that's pointing us in that direction. Now, the Bible is very clear. You're not going to have a temptation that you can't overcome. Whenever you get tempted, God has already provided a way out. So these are not excuses to fall into these things, but there is a reality of wounds that cause it to be easier for us to be tempted in certain ways. And when we deal with those things and we get those out, we find that it we have more strength to deal with that temptation and it becomes less of a battle. There are sometimes that, that we're fighting particular areas and it just it feels like that temptation just never stops. We, we get rid of it. We push it away. We say no. And then it comes back. We push it away. We say no. And then it comes back. And there's usually a reason for that. And inner healing is one of the ways to get through that and, and find some freedom. Sometimes there's no reason. Sometimes it's just an ongoing onslaught of the enemy. And then, you know, resisting, fighting against the enemy, like, like James says, draw near to God and resist the enemy and the enemy will flee from you. That, that is, is key. So if it's identity, you believe it, you pray it, 
you declare it over yourself. If it's correction, you receive it, repent, and then look for healing. Is there an area of healing that needs to happen? Start moving in the other direction. But then what about the other type of revelation, which is what we call direction? Direction. Now, again, you have momentary things versus a seasonal direction. A momentary thing means it's something that you can respond to and fulfill right then, right there, immediately. Um, those things, it's going to be less of a need for the, the process. Um, again, if it's encouraging, if it's good, uh, it, you've already discerned that it's from the Lord. So if, if you don't know if it's the Lord, then you take a look. Like, is it biblical? Well, no, the Bible says not to do it. But I kind of felt like God was telling me to do it. Well, that's clearly not God. Throw that away. That's never God. Easy to answer. But if it's a good thing, well, I feel like I'm supposed to, um, I'm supposed to, to share Jesus with this person. I'm not really sure if that's God that's prompting me. Just go with it. It's not going to hurt. Just go with it. Share that because that's a positive thing. Even if it's not God, it's not going to hurt anything. Just go for it. But there are some things that are more of a seasonal type of a thing. Maybe you're, you're being called to start a new business or start a new ministry or, or maybe being called to move to another place or another location. You, you start taking a look at this. If this is about a life course, you want to prepare, but you don't want to try to make it happen. I, I, I've, I've seen again and again people that have messed up revelation trying to make it happen because they, they didn't want to wait on God. Or maybe they thought that they'd waited on God. Or, or maybe there was an opportunity they thought was God. I mean, Abraham made this mistake, right? He has this promise from God, you're going to have a child. And he waits and he is at the end of time for him to have a child, for his wife to have a child. And his wife comes up with this idea. Well, obviously I'm not having a child, but hey, I, I've got this servant girl, Hagar. Why don't you have a child with her? And it'll be my child and this will be the promise. And well, I don't see any other way. So I, I guess I'm going to have to help God out because it's not really happening. I know he promised that this was going to happen. Let me help him a little bit. And he birthed Ishmael. And then 13 years later, he births Isaac, which is actually the son of promise. So it, it's, 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 it's been an issue from the beginning of time of people trying to follow God that we will be tempted to make something happen that God has promised to happen. If God has promised it, God's going to make it happen. But we do want to make sure that we're not resisting it, that we're not stopping it, that if God says now that we're not the one, we're not going to be the reason why it wouldn't happen. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're called to be a missionary in another country, or you, you've been told that you're going to be traveling to other places. Do you have a passport? If you don't have a passport, well, I don't know when I'll be going. Well, get a passport now. It's not going to hurt to have a passport and not use it. But if you don't have a passport and God says, this is the trip that I want you to go on, and it's happening soon, it may take too long to get a passport and you may miss the opportunity. So get your passport now. If God said, and that doesn't mean you're going to buy the plane ticket until God has said, this is it. This is the one. Do this. He will clarify your timing. He will clarify that. But until then, you start to prepare. Maybe God has called you to open up a business. Uh, may, maybe he's told you that he's going to give you a, 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 a new business and you're going to have to start it. Well, what do you know about management? What do you know about hiring and firing? What, what do you know about um, the basic laws to open up a business? What do you know about making a business plan? Um, what kind of business? Is it going to be in the food industry? Is it going to be in retail? Is it going to be uh, in tech? What, what kind of business? What do you need to know about that industry so that you can be successful in that business? It's not, again, you're not trying to make it happen, but you want to make sure that you've got the basic things that would hinder you from stepping forward at the right time. You, you can start to develop those skills and get ready. Think of it like a surfer trying to go surfing. 
I, I don't know how many of you have ever been surfing. I personally haven't been surfing, but I've heard enough about it that I know this basic concept that when, when somebody is surfing and they're out there, they're waiting for the right wave, they've got to be looking and they see or sense that wave coming and they've got to start swimming and, and preparing, start moving before the wave comes so that when the wave comes that they are able to catch it and the wave is able to propel them forward. If they don't start, they're going to miss the momentum. They'll never be able to get that wave. If they wait until the wave is on top of them, they won't actually get on the on the part of the wave that will push them forward. They'll just go up and then right back down. And so they miss the opportunity. So paying attention to that time, you want to prepare. And when the time is right, you want to start swimming forward so that you don't miss it when God starts to call you into it. So here, here's a couple things in this preparing process when, when you've got a destiny word, a direction word, and there's something big that God has called you to, talk about it. Start talking about what God has called you to, to do. How many people did Abraham tell that he was going to be the father? I mean, his family, his community, those that were around him, he spoke about this. Everybody that asked him, well, why did you leave? Well, God told me I was going to leave. When he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, like not just the father of many, but the father of many nations. Like it begins to shift his identity. Uh, and so he, he, he was communicating, he was talking about, you know, you, you have different times where we talk about what God has said and communicating that to ourselves, to those that are around us, especially those that we're in community with, because there, there's an aspect of accountability. We talk about accountability so many times it becomes a negative. And, and there's times when we need some accountability to help us not do the wrong thing. But more often, we need the accountability to do the right thing. When we tell people, God has told me this, God's told me that this is going to happen. God told me that I'm going to be a part of this. We have people that are around us that are praying with us, that are encouraging us, that are reminding us. So talk about it. Review the revelation, especially if it seems delayed. When it seems delayed, we want to go back through all the different times that God spoke, the dreams that we had, the, the feelings that we had, the, the, the prophetic words that we received, the, the visions that we had, all the different things that tied together, the circumstances that opened up and start reviewing that revelation. But this is what God said. This is what God did. And, and holding that in our heart, holding space for that around us. And, and sometimes we actually have to wage warfare with those words. This is what Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, that, that we wage the good warfare with the prophetic words spoken over us. And when we get prophetic words of things that we're going to do, things that are going to happen in our lives, that declaring that revelation, saying it out loud is one of the ways that we did, that we wage warfare, holding our hearts into a place of trust and belief, holding our lives on the path so that we're ready and prepared for the moment when God says now that we go immediately. That is a, is a form of warfare. Because a lot of times warfare has to do with the mind, has to do with the emotions, has to do with the will. And when we start wanting something else, maybe that it's a distraction or something that we shouldn't have, we're able to hold ourselves because we're holding on to that revelation. Or maybe our thoughts start questioning or, or, or doubting and we can bring ourselves back when we get disappointed or, or saddened because of, of things that are happening around us. We come back to the revelation and we deal with it because one, one of the things that will happen is when we have these promises that, that we can end up missing out on the promise uh, because of delays and, and allowing ourselves to not actually wage warfare with the words that we've spoken. It is a, a verse in Proverbs that says that uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. You know, I found a way to guarantee that hope gets deferred. Decide when and how God's going to fulfill his promise. 
If you've decided when and how God's going to do what he said he's going to do, you can almost guarantee that hope will get deferred. So one of the things in reviewing Revelation is reviewing what actually what God actually said versus how you want it to happen and what you think it meant and holding on to the actual words of God and putting our trust in God, not in our understanding and the things that we said. And then as we move forward, and especially as we begin to see our destiny starting to come forward as what God promised begins to be fulfilled or doors start open. We start celebrating every step along the way and we share testimonies. We, we, we celebrate when God does something in somebody else's life and their words start to get fulfilled. We, we begin to, to, to share those stories. We celebrate that and then we do it for every little thing along the path for our own. And in so doing, we actually create this place of thankfulness that smooths out our path as we move forward. So there, there's some keys. Like when we, we hear from God different types of revelation and how we respond to different things, um, different ways of doing it. So let, let's take a look at a couple of these comments and let's see where we're at. Um, all right, so Chandri. Uh, I have dreams of casting spirits out of people. Even myself, is God calling me to a ministry uh, of deliverance? How could I walk in that word? Well, that's one of the ways that God speaks is by giving us what we call calling dreams, which just seems like a, a promise. And so start studying deliverance. Start start to pay attention to that. Yeah, you know, I, I was working for the bank a, a number of years ago, and I had gotten prophetic words and I, I'd known God had spoken to me. Other people had spoken it to me that I was going to be preaching. And so in the bank, we had this back room. It was kind of a, like a conference room. And there was a podium at the front of it with a big open table. And it was in the back where I didn't bother anybody. And so I would go back into this room during my lunch break on a regular basis. And I would preach sermons to that empty room and prepare for what God had said was going to happen. I began to set up, I, I began to practice thinking through what I was going to say, but not just thinking about it, actually practicing delivering the words and how it was going to come across. And I began to, to develop skills then that I was going to need. I wasn't going to need for, for a few years. I actually didn't start preaching on a regular basis till almost 10 years after that. But I had practiced it. I'd, I'd settled that thing in and it becomes something that I did. And so starting to, to do that practice is, um, is, is important. Let's see. Tanya in Canada, this is the last thing I think I would do. Wow, I always felt as though it was too precious to share and to keep it sacred until it comes to pass. Uh, I think that was when I was talking about sharing the, the prophetic word in the the things that that God spoke to us. Yeah, you know, I, I've actually I've heard some people say um, I've actually I've heard a couple people that, that have said, you know, when I get a promise from God, I don't want to tell anybody because I don't want the devil to hear because then he'll stop it. And I, I'm not sure how big their devil is compared to how small their God is, but that seems really backwards to me. It seems like God is really big and the devil is really small in comparison to him. Now, not in comparison to me, but in comparison to him. I mean, to the point where God prophesied everything that Jesus was going to do, uh, all of it, and put it right into scripture. And, and the thing is, is it was there and it was available, but he, he was able to make it so the devil couldn't even understand what was clearly written in scripture. I think that's backwards when we think that we can't share it because the devil might stop it. Sometimes we don't want to share it because we don't want to sound prideful. And, and that that's important. We actually, we should have that concern, but not as a reason not to share it, but as a way to temper the way that we share it. We, we need to, you know, God, God told me that this was going to happen. Um, not like, oh, do you know how, important I'm going to be. Wait until I'm, I'm going to tell you what God's going to use me to do. 
You see, it's just in how we share it that that that's a very different process. And so that's an issue. Sometimes we don't want to share it because we're afraid that we won't actually fulfill it. And we're scared of, of not looking good in front of others. And that again, that that's an issue. And, and sometimes it's that that private thing that there, there are times when God speaks something and then he tells us not to tell it. Now, if he's made it clear to you not to tell it, that there are times when he, when he just speaks these precious things. But there it's often that sharing it, it actually frames something in our life that 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 allows us to start believing it, giving words to it, putting it out loud. It actually strengthens our faith in what's being said. And it takes a measure of faith just to say, God told me. And, and that faith, when you use your faith, it increases your faith. So when you use that little bit of faith to say, God told me, it actually increases your faith for the fulfillment of the word. Tim said, I think sometimes we hear from God about his calling, but we think God is going to drop the answer from heaven right away. But we forget that many times our calling is a step-by-step -step process over time. Exactly it. One of the things that it is a major misunderstanding for a lot of people is, is how revelation works. Uh, we, we kind of have this magic formula idea about revelation. Like I'm going to get one prophetic word or I'm going to get one dream and that's going to be my whole destiny. But usually when God speaks, it, it's layering of this upon this, upon this, upon this, upon this. I mean, we'll just come back to Abraham because he's such a, a beautiful picture of how this works. If you go from the beginning of the story of Abraham all the way until the birth of Isaac, and start counting all the different ways that God said the same thing to Abraham over that period of time. He spoke it, and then he spoke it, and then he spoke it, and then he confirmed it, then he spoke it, then he confirmed it, then he clarified it. It's just again and again, over a period of 25 years, Abraham was given more pieces and, and more understanding of that prophetic call that was on his life. And individual revelations are often just one part of an ongoing conversation. And when we take a look at that ongoing conversation that includes revelations, that includes prophetic words and our dreams and our visions and our visitations, but also includes our scripture reading and those things that really stick out to us and the opportunities that we have and the passions that we have and the training that we have, all of these things are natural talents. When they come together, we start to have this overwhelming weight of revelation that pushes us forward into our destiny. And if we start paying attention to all the ways that God speaks, we'll find ourselves getting to a place uh, often, not, not like every day, but we'll find multiple times in our lives where major decisions we're making because we know that we know that we know if we don't do this, that we're in rebellion to God because there's this overwhelming weight of revelation that has moved us towards something. It is a beautiful process, and he is so good to do that. Um, Sin asks, how, how do you know what your purpose is? Well, that is um, all the things that I said, right? Education, experiences, passions, prophetic words, revelations, opportunities. Um, you know, when I talk about passions, not necessarily, not always just the things that we're really excited about, but sometimes the thing that bugs us. Uh, many times people will find what they're called to fix by, what, by recognizing what really bothers them and being a solution. When we find things that bother us, usually it's because we're supposed to have a solution for us, for them. Um, Diane, just a couple more questions. We're going to wrap up. How, how would we know if that is a calling dream? Um, a calling dream is, it, or any type of calling revelation is when the revelation is either showing you do something that you're not currently doing um, or saying that you're going to do something that you're not currently doing. So in a calling dream, when you have 
doing ministry of some kind, and it's not necessarily with a specific person in a specific moment you know, that you wake up and think, oh, I need to go pray for this person, talk to this person, etc. But it's like, oh, that was interesting. Well, I, was, I keep on having dreams where I'm praying for people and they get healed. I keep on praying for having dreams where I'm preaching in front of crowds. I keep on having dreams where I'm in, on TV or I keep on having dreams where whatever it is, the, those kinds of things, those become clues that you're having a calling dream. Okay. And I think that that is the, the end of our question. So guys, I, I hope you found this helpful. I, some of the comments, it seems like like many of you did. Um, th these are the kinds of things that we like to teach. Uh, I, I was taking some of the concepts that we have and some of our resources that are available. So uh, if you want to learn more, always follow us. We, we've got lots of these videos right here on our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure that you look through. We've got a lot of videos on our YouTube channel, some from John Paul, some from myself and some others. So scroll through those. You're going to find some resources. We've got a free blog that's on our website. Uh, we've got online courses. All the courses that John Paul wrote and taught, they're available as a subscription. And then including some that I've written and taught and some of our friends like Ken Fish and Charity Bowman Webb and Elijah House that, that are all on there that are available. So we, we've got lots of things that are going to help you grow in hearing God better and responding to his voice. Because that's that's why we're here, is to help you hear God better and respond to his voice. And as always, if you've found this helpful, if you would support us financially, that would be a blessing. Just go to streamsministries.com. There's a donate button, makes it nice and easy. And we would be honored to partner with you as we get this word out there and make sure that people know. So may you guys be blessed. May his voice continue to increase in your life. May you recognize it and respond to it more than ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless you guys.